Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be retrofitting high beam assist to my BMW F20. Now this is a very, very popular upgrade and a very, very easy retrofit if you have already the CAFAS camera, which is the driver assistance camera already fitted to your car, which my F20 does have. Now, if you remember, I did say to you there was a reason why I bought this car and this was purely the reason. The CAFAS holds so many retrofits that you can do to the car, especially with the driver assistance pack. So today, we are gonna be installing a new switch cluster. Now, if you'll see right here, we've got the high beam assist button, which is down here, and we've also got the BC button. Now, you'll notice that it's different compared to the other one. It's not just one button, it's two different buttons. You'll also see here, we've got the auto wiper button, which you guys would have seen on my auto lights video that I already had installed. And that was a test switch cluster that I like to keep spare. That one doesn't have the rear wipe function on the other switch cluster inside the car. That one's just a dummy one, which is gonna be kept on the bench here in case I ever need to test it. This is the correct one. I couldn't find that part when I was actually looking for it, but this is the correct part number for my car. And this one come off an F20. This one cost me around 200 pound with obviously the high beam assist and the driver assistance pack built in inside this switch cluster. This come off an F20 and therefore I'm gonna be putting it onto my F20. So I'm not gonna speak anymore. You're now gonna to get to see me install the switch cluster and remove the steering wheel. So I know a lot of you guys probably thinking, why didn't I show you in the last video? Well, that is the reason. And now I'm gonna be showing you how to change over on your BMW F20. And also this does apply to the F30. What? God damn, get it done, will ya? Woo. When the blow up now, everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories. We run into New York, so you know. Okay, so the first thing we're going to be doing because we're going to be playing about with the airbag and obviously all the steering wheel is we're going to disconnect the battery on the car. So we're just going to look for the negative terminal and we're just going to isolate it so we don't end up with any kind of explosion from the airbag or anything which is now disconnected now my best advice is to leave your boot open if you are got a hatchback or any sort that needs remote locking to open the boot otherwise you won't be able to get access to it um, where the battery is disconnected so we are going to leave this open while we do change over to be on the safe side so if we need to access it we can do now another strong point that i just want to point out is if you have driven your car I would let it set for at least an hour to let the airbag deflate itself and then take off the battery cable because the airbag would already be risen and be ready to fire in case of an accident. So let it set back down before doing this job. Okay guys, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna get your steering wheel because on these, a lot of people don't know how to remove these. You're gonna wanna get your steering wheel and you're gonna wanna turn it to this section right here. Now, now your steering wheel sitting in this position like this you will be able to gain access to the clips behind the steering wheel. Now, a lot of people think they can go in from behind here and sit the screwdriver up, but there is a much easier way to gain access to the steering wheel and take off the airbag. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that on these. So the first one is to pull the steering wheel out fully. So you've got full access to the steering wheel, lock it so it can't move. Now, a lot of people ain't aware that you can just actually pull this cowling down here. Now it is quite solid um on here but you can actually break it free and you'll be able to gain access to the whole steering wheel now we will just remove it in a second if you see there you can use a flathead screwdriver be careful because you don't want to crack the plastic now if you lock the steering wheel up and you just remove all the cowling which is just here you will take out this cowling right here now be careful with this because you've also got the transponder which sits down here which you're going to want to pull out and you'll see that's the bottom bit of the cowling out now once that's out you can then lift up this portion right here and you'll be able to set that back now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you how to get to the steering wheel clips right here with these out the way so that way you guys know how to remove the steering wheel now this is the easiest way to remove the steering wheel without going up through the back and trying to find the clips. And I'm gonna show you how to locate them. Now, I don't know if you can see right here, but just where my finger is, you will see these are the springs for the airbag right down here. Now, the problem is I can't get a screwdriver in there while holding the camera. But if you just look here, you lift up the spring and one of the side of the airbag will come out. 
Now, if you look here also, you'll also see the other one literally positioned right here. It isn't hard to actually feel or see, but you'll feel there's like catches which release the airbag. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is just pull them up and pull the airbag out at the same time on one end and do the same on the other end. When we get the steering wheel off, I will show you what I mean, but it's not very easy to see while I do it. Okay guys, as you'll see here, we've now got the airbag out. And as I said to you, it's not a very easy job. Now, when you first get in the airbag, you're gonna wanna locate all these tabs here. So if you'll see here, you've got all the tabs that lock on the airbag. Now, all you're gonna wanna do is just pull that down and that will release. Now you've got the other one here, which is the other connector for the airbag, which you're gonna wanna pull out as well which comes out quite easily. Now you wanna be careful of these because these are all your multifunction controllers, wires right here. You also wanna be careful of all the horn. Now if they do come loose, do not worry. You'll see on the airbag here, mine has actually come off, um, but it's not an issue if you realign it correctly. You're gonna to wanna to pull this connector off right here. And once you've done that, that's the airbag free. Now, after that, you're gonna to wanna to put the steering wheel back into a straight position. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna to wanna to locate a 60 mil socket, which is right here. And then you're gonna to wanna to break this free, which is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna put you back on the stand while we crack this off. So we are just gonna use the impact gun. And as you see, that's the bolt out. Now, you are gonna to have to wobble it a bit to get the steering wheel off, which I'll show you. It just comes off like that then you're gonna to wanna to be careful with this right here, which is for the SDL, and you just pull straight out, and that connects the steering wheel. Now, I'm just gonna quickly show you the airbag. So if we just put that in here, you'll see, you'll basically see here behind, you'll see the clips. And if you can see that one right here, you gotta pull this clip back to release the airbag, and it clips onto there. So now you see why I removed the whole cowling to gain access to these because it's much, much easier than sticking them up through here like someone's already tried to do to pull them latches when you can easily just go from behind and pull the latches here and pull them down and release the airbag. You will see them, they're not hard to get to, just use a very small screwdriver and you'll start feeling them spring. They spring and you wanna hold them down and hold the other one down while you release the airbag. So now we've got that off, this is the SNL we're gonna be replacing. So now what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to get our, I believe it's an eight mil. Let's just see, it's not an eight, maybe it's a seven. So it's a seven mil socket. So we're gonna get our seven mil socket and just release this SNL from here. And these bolts ain't tight and very tight, so do bear that in mind also. The seven mil socket for this. Be careful not to lose any of the bolts because you're gonna need. Okay guys, so as you'll see here, all the four screws are now out. So we're gonna pull this off. And if you'll see here, we've got two connectors that you're just gonna wanna push down and unlock them. They're unlocking tabs and this one's just got like a pin. And then that comes straight out. Now you'll also see in here, you've got like this polystyrene piece. You wanna keep that and just pull it in your new one. But if you'll see, this is the one that I actually originally installed and you'll see here, it's only got the front wiper. It's got the auto lights, but it doesn't have the rear washer. Therefore, this is why I'm changing it over. Now this is the new one right here we're gonna be installing. And what I'm gonna be doing is putting this on. So we're gonna put this polystyrene piece in right here. And then what we're gonna go ahead and do is just bolt this straight onto here after we obviously put the connectors in. So you're gonna to wanna to put the connectors straight back in like that. This one does not go in anywhere. This is the antenna for your remote control. So you wanna keep that separate. Then what you're gonna to wanna to do is just bolt this straight up to here. So you'll see here, I've now just bolted everything back up. You just don't, you don't wanna tighten them down too tight because it's only holding on to plastic and you want it to be secure, but not over tight. So just let them have a bit of play. Once that's all secure, back on, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to get your steering wheel and refit your steering wheel. Now, this is the part a lot of people don't understand. If you look in the steering wheel right here, you've actually got a line that aligns it with the steering 
joint itself. And you should feel it go on. There'll be a smooth edge on the steering wheel that you should be able to feel go back on. Then you're gonna wanna connect your connector straight into here. You're gonna wanna tuck these out the way for any kind of harm. And then you're gonna wanna connect up your airbag once you've done everything else. So we're just gonna put the tighten the bolt back down. So now we've reconnected all the steering wheel, we put the bolt back in. What we're gonna go ahead and do now is reconnect all the airbag. So to reconnect the airbag, it's as simple as putting it back in the clip and then clipping the other one back in right here, which you'll see. Now once it's all clipped back in, you just wanna tuck the cables out the way. There is areas for them to go in, in the steering wheel itself to keep them out of the way so they don't get crushed. You just gotta look for them where they come from. And once you've done that, you're then gonna wanna locate your spring if you need to pull it for your horn. And you're gonna wanna pull it on here so it's ready to go on to the main circuit before for your horn mine is now located then once you've done that you're just going to want to push this straight on like that and as you see the horn and the steering wheel are now back on okay guys so if you'll see there now the steering wheel airbag cowling and a new sdl is now on the car now we are ready to code it and make it all work with the high beam assistant so i'm going to go ahead reconnect the battery now and code in the high beam assistant to this car but if you'll see, it's not actually hard to remove the airbag or the steering wheel on this car. And it's also not hard to remove the switch cluster if you want to do this retrofit. It's very, very easy and literally takes 10 to 15 minutes maximum to do it all. So I'm going to move over to the coding now. I'm going to go ahead and code the high beam assistant to this car. Okay, so as you've seen there, I've just put on high beam assist on my BMW F20. Now the coding is very, very simple. All you have to do is VO code 5AC to your vehicle order and all your vehicle control modules. Now, in my personal experience, I code all the modules relevant to the car just in case you miss one and then it doesn't work as expected. If you are planning to do this, you do not have to code all the modules. The main ones you have to code are the FEM, FRM, whatever one you have the combi and i would also code the mbt or the cic whatever you have in your car but mine is now fully working and it has been retrofitted i'm very very happy with the outcome it's very very simple i don't know who actually made the f series but they've made it so so easy to code and do retrofits on this car it's actually unbelievable you would think a baby could actually go out and do this on these cars. It is much, much simpler than the E-Series. And the high beam assist is one incredible, incredible feature that I think if you don't have it, it is worth retrofitting it because it's more up to date than the older one on the previous generation E60. The high beam assist works brilliantly on the F-Series as it turns one of the headlights off and leaves one of them on to not blind the other oncoming traffic on the other side of the road. It works absolutely wonders. So if you are planning to retrofit, it is a very, very straight install. Just make sure you get the correct part number for your switch cluster and make sure you obviously grab the tools to actually code in what you need to do for the high beam assistant. So I hope you guys actually enjoyed this video and I hope now you see me remove the switch cluster from my BMW F20. So thank you very much for watching. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.